Enola Holmes is a movie that centers around Sherlock Holmes' younger sister. And you might be wondering what I mean by the title of this video. Well, the reason I gave it that title is because if you read the synopsis of Enola Holmes on Netflix, this is how it reads. Her mother vanished. Her brothers, Sherlock and Mycroft, useless. To solve this mystery, she'll go it alone. The game is afoot. Yep, as soon as I read that, I thought to myself, they are just going to dumb Sherlock Holmes down and make him, as Netflix says, useless, just so they can try and make the female character seem better than him. And then, to insult him further, they use his signature catchphrase, the game is afoot. Does that sound like they are honouring the character of Sherlock Holmes to you with an insulting description like that? Well, in this video, we are going to find out if the movie actually does the smart thing and tries to build Enola Holmes up from scratch organically, or if it just takes the lazy route and tries to make the female character smarter by making the male characters dumber. The review is on. Let's start with the characters. Now, Millie Bobby Brown, who plays Enola Holmes, is a very good actress, and they tried to give her a chipper and upbeat personality, and I liked it. She has a very charming demeanour, and she comes off as very likeable. But I would say that as well as being the character's strength, it is also her weakness. Too often, she's acting quirky when she should be terrified, and that does take away from the seriousness and tension of the scenes. And add to that, there are a lot more jokes that don't work than ones that do. The whole Widow part of the movie in particular I found to be really cringeworthy. And she often breaks the fourth wall, which started out okay, but then she asks us questions and stuff, and I thought it got very silly. It actually reminded me of Dora the Explorer, it was that juvenile. And then, the part that I feared, she will start going off with feminist dialogue that is so on the nose obvious. And this is where I was afraid that the movie would really start to veer off the wrong path. Often she will say stuff like this. The corset, a symbol of repression to those who are forced to wear it. Wow, that was necessary dialogue. And there are other times where you think, you just conveyed your message very well visually, but now you are just spelling it out and you've made it preachy. And then you will occasionally hear lines like this. You could change your mind about a boy. I'm not a boy. I'm a man. You're a man when I tell you you're a man. What the hell was that? Is that their idea of women putting a man in his place? You're a man when I tell you you're a man. Imagine if the roles were reversed and the female character said, I'm a woman, and then the man says, You're a girl. You're a woman when I say you are. Those very same people would lose their minds, but no doubt they will praise it here. I call it hypocritical bullshit. And this is supposed to be our romantic couple. That's hardly cute banter, it just comes off as demeaning, and I would feel the same way if he said it to her. Now I didn't think this would work, but I surprisingly liked Henry Cavill as Sherlock Holmes. It feels like they were being very careful when writing for him because if this was any other feminist movie, then they would have done their best to make him a horrible person and a complete idiot. But they didn't do that, which I am very relieved about. I would say that he is awfully quiet though, whereas Sherlock Holmes is usually quite chatty and overly analytical. Much to the dismay of the characters around him, but that's usually because he's right. And inexplicably, Watson is not in this movie. Instead, we have Mycroft, and he is made to be a complete asshole in this version. Specifically towards Enola. I mean, I know his opinions could be of the time period, but they lay them on so thick to the point that he comes across as a supervillain. And if you weren't told that this movie is based on Sherlock Holmes, then you wouldn't even know that this is supposed to be Mycroft. They butchered his character that much. We also have the kind of sort of love interest in here, and the actor was good, but the character was very flat to me and was completely forgettable. Also, as amazingly talented as an actress Helena Bonham Carter is, I thought she was miscast as Enola and Sherlock's mother. The emotional core of this movie is supposed to be the relationship between Enola and her mother, and I felt absolutely nothing during their scenes together. And I really feel like their connection needed to be more genuine in order for me to really like it, and it wasn't. Her mother's motivational speeches that makes Enola motivated really started to lose their impact as the movie went on, because they used them so many times. And strangely, at the beginning of the movie, Enola narrates what the relationship with the family was like, and apparently both Sherlock and Mycroft left when she was very little, leaving just her and her mother. And Enola says that she doesn't mind because she preferred it that way. The reason I say this is strange is because later she says to Sherlock that you didn't even write or send letters, which made no sense to me because in the opening of the movie, she said she preferred it when it was just her and her mother. You can't establish something like that and then just change it later. For an emotional scene like this to work, you needed Enola to narrate the beginning of the movie and say that she misses her brother, instead of saying that she preferred it when he was gone. Then an emotional outburst scene like this could have worked, but because they wanted it to sound like her life was better with no boys in it, it led to an emotional argument that felt out of place and emotionless. 
Now I want to talk about the production value of this movie, and this is where I can speak very positively. First of all, the soundtrack in this film was really nice. As a matter of fact, I was watching this movie on my projector, and my family said that they couldn't make out what I was watching, but they thought the music was very nice. And I agree, it was. So nice in fact that I watched the whole of the end credits just to listen to the music. So top marks to Daniel Pemberton who composed the music for this movie. This is definitely his best work. And the production values of this film are amazing. Aside from some clumsy CGI, the production value and the sets are very well designed and this did not feel like a cheap streaming service movie. It felt like a film that would have gone straight to cinemas, so that is very impressive and I hope that we can get more high production value with Netflix movies in the future. Now it's time to talk about the big problems with this film, and that is the story, structure, and the actual mystery. Now the first 40 minutes of the movie had a decent pace to it, and if you try really hard to ignore the preachy feminist stuff, then I found myself really enjoying it. But then I started to feel its length, as once she went after the kind of sort of love interest, it started to feel like the movie was getting distracted with a subplot that I didn't care about or want to see. And then about 30 to 40 minutes later, you find out that this subplot that you don't really care about is the actual main plot of the film, and the whole search for Enola's mother is put on hold indefinitely. I feel like this story does not have a clear journey from beginning to end. It's trying to go on a straight path, but then it hits a bunch of bumps and stops on the way. The key to a good mystery movie is one that leaves you with a satisfying sense of revelation and closure, and I didn't get that with Enola Holmes. The movie doesn't leave a satisfying impact on you once the mystery is solved. The reveals just come and go very quickly. And that leads to another problem I had with the movie, and that is to do with the structure. The movie starts out with the mystery, where did Enola's mother disappear off to? That's very simple. Now Enola wants to go and investigate, but douchebag Mycroft wants to send her to a boarding school, and this proves as a constant obstacle for her investigation. Again, that's simple enough and plays into the already established story as the two plot points are related. And then, out of nowhere, another mystery appears where we are introduced to Enola's love interest, and incidentally, he has an assassin that is after him. So Enola saves him, and then they make their way to London. They go their separate ways, and Enola goes back to investigate the case of her mother. She makes a very little bit of progress, and then it gets put on hold for a huge chunk of the movie as Enola goes to save her sort of love interest because it just occurs to her that he won't survive as he's, as she refers to him, the useless boy. She finds him, they have some <clears throat> charming love interest banter. If you don't stop looking at me like that, Viscount Irritation, Marquess of Bothersome Sheer, I'll murder you myself. Then Enola gets captured and sent back to Mycroft. She is sent to boarding school for another good chunk of time, the kind of sort of love interest shows up again and breaks her out, and then we go back to the mystery of who is trying to kill the love interest. And that's when we get the lackluster reveal of who all this time was trying to kill the love interest, as well as the underwhelming climax. And after a long while, we then see the mother and get a half assed excuse for why she randomly left one day and didn't even tell her daughter. It felt like these are two separate plot points that were meant for two separate films, but they just combine them into one and they don't gel together. If you want to put two mystery plot lines together, then they need to be related. The two plot lines in Enola Holmes are not. They couldn't be more unrelated, and having to switch back between the two makes the film feel disjointed. As a comparison to that, all of the episodes in the show do this, but in Sherlock Series 3, Episode 2, Watson and Mary had a wedding, and Sherlock, being the best man, had to make a speech and told stories about some of the cases that both he and John went on called the Mayfly Man. So we were flashing back to some memories, and they all connected and formed a cohesive narrative of their own. But there was the final piece missing. There was the final piece to that mystery that Sherlock didn't solve. But then they very smartly connected that storyline with the wedding. And you see that internally, Sherlock is trying to put the pieces together and narrows down the possible answers. And he does. So both stories were linked, and by the time the episode was over, everything beautifully came together. The Wedding and the Mayfly Man plotlines were linked, and all of the Sherlock episodes with more than one storyline connect and link in this way. The search for Enola's mother and the attempted murder of Tewkesbury are not linked. They are two completely separate stories, two pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that do not fit, and that just made the overall movie feel disjointed. And I was not impressed with the structure of the two stories that they shoved into this one movie, and when combined with the incredibly on-the-nose feminist dialogue, 
It feels like it lacks the genuine feeling that you would expect from a story set in the Sherlock Holmes world. And that really took me out of the movie, and there are a lot of scenes that are like that. The people that wrote this are clearly nowhere near as smart or skilled as the Sherlock writers, and it just goes to show that although the production value of this movie is on par with that of a Hollywood movie, the writing is far worse than that of a TV show. And the so-called detective work that she does in this movie, I swear there were times where I thought she figured stuff out way too quickly, especially when you take into account that she is pretty much just starting out as a detective. She figures them out so quickly that it reminded me of the scene in Batman Forever where Bruce and Alfred figured out the answer to the Riddler's riddle in like half a minute. It disappointed me there, and it disappointed me here too. The detective work just didn't feel like a brain teaser to me, and it certainly didn't make the character have to struggle and think like Benedict Cumberbatch's version of Sherlock constantly had to. Now that is a show that knows how to have the greatest detective struggle to figure out a mystery. But in Enola Holmes, she reaches deductive conclusions too quickly, and she never had to feel the pressure of hitting a dead end like Sherlock Holmes had done. And not to mention that this movie is just way too preachy with its feminist messages, and it just became too much after a while. I mean, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but go with the Wonder Woman approach. Show, don't tell. Because when Enola Holmes had to show the struggle she was going through, I actually liked what they were doing, as she didn't always win a physical altercation, and she didn't always get out of an unfortunate situation. And that stuff I really dug, but once they start preaching about it with the feminist dialogue, it just becomes obnoxiously preachy and comes off as bad writing. I didn't even like the kinda sorta romance. It felt like they wanted to tell a little romantic story, but then they changed their minds because it's anti-feminist or something. And then when the two characters have to say goodbye, the movie so badly wants you to care, but you just don't. Because the whole time, these two's relationship has been so distant and even hostile at times. Half the time, even the love interest seems to be confused as to what's going on with this relationship, and I was right there with him, and it made their so-called romance feel disingenuous. The fun of watching Sherlock Holmes piece mysteries together is something that pretty much all interpretations of Sherlock Holmes have done so well in their own different ways. The BBC Sherlock especially did it in a really creative way. But aside from this one scene, I never got a strong, impactful feeling when Enola tries to piece together the mystery. It just came off as flat, and it didn't feel like, okay, now we are starting to get a clearer picture here. We are just told things very quickly and in a flat manner which has a complete lack of impact, with the exception of this one scene. So I think this film is average, and I would have originally given it a 5 out of 10, but after a lot of the feminist messaging which was just so distracting and pulled you out of the film, I can't take it anymore. We just came off of Mulan, and I have really lost all tolerance for it, and I want them to either incorporate it in a way which was smartly conveyed, like in Wonder Woman, or just not include it at all, and especially not like this, which is just so on the nose obvious, to the point that it's just cringeworthy. And this does massively get in the way of the movie going experience, as it feels like the movie constantly stops to give you a few seconds of preaching in between the dialogue. Movies with great male characters never go on about how great men are. On the contrary, they do the opposite. They fail. A lot. And by the end of the movie, we still think they are amazing characters. So why can't female characters do the same thing? So because of the forced feminist messaging, this movie loses an extra point, And it gets a below average 4 out of 10. The funny thing is, if this movie kept the plot more simple and took out all of the in-your-face preachy feminist nonsense, then I would actually have a fun time watching this, as I do like the directing style, I like the choreography, and the quirky fourth wall thing would have been more endearing. But seeing as the story is disjointed, and the constant, and I mean constant, non-stop feminist preaching that they are throwing in your face, it really pulls you out of the world and you are not able to enjoy it. And the mystery itself was a big disappointment, and although the visuals are on par with a studio for movie, the script comes off as something that you would expect from a lower budget streaming service film. And by the way, I don't know what Netflix were paying out with this insulting description. Why would they call Sherlock useless? That is enough to put anyone off. It certainly put my sister and my parents off, and I can imagine it would put others off too. So yeah, I wouldn't say this movie insults the legacy of Sherlock Holmes, but that being said, I wouldn't say it honours it either. If you want to see a much better interpretation of Sherlock Holmes' sister, then watch the BBC Sherlock series. She's scary, she's smarter than both Sherlock and Mycroft, and they managed to accomplish that in a way that was believable, and they didn't have to dumb the male characters down in order to do so. They were still very much themselves, including Sherlock who was still very chatty. So everything that this movie tried to do, the BBC Sherlock series has done infinitely better, and you were able to enjoy it without feeling like you were being preached to, which pretty much ruins a lot of entertainment in Hollywood these 
these days. The BBC Sherlock is also on Netflix, so I'd recommend that you go see that if you haven't already. That's what I had to do after watching Enola Holmes, as I really felt like I needed a palate cleanser. I would even say that the Robert Downey Jr. movies were superior than Enola Holmes, and did the mystery element much better. Again, you can also find these on Netflix. And I would recommend all of these way easier than I would recommend the forgettable and disposable Enola Holmes. So, that's it for another video. Comment below and let me know what you thought of Enola Holmes, and what did you think of the way the movie handled its two mysteries? Did you feel that it was disjointed too, or did you feel satisfied with its execution? Be sure to let me know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help in getting my channel recognised by YouTube's broken algorithm, and if you want to hear my podcasts and reviews, as well as my thoughts on each episode of The Mandalorian Season 2 when that comes around, then all you have to do is donate just one dollar on Patreon, and you will gain access to my entire library of movies and TV TV show reviews, as well as discussions of movies such as Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Thank you so much as always for watching guys, I really appreciate it, and I will see all of you very soon. Take care.